the story of hip hop in the continent of Africa is a complex one. I mean, so is every story, but ours is embedded in the need to be acknowledged by the West. Hip hop comes to us through the faces that mirror our experiences and with a vernacular and a direct aesthetic that speaks to our growing song of rebellion and this mirror image but at the very same time it calls us into a different world that seems bigger and in many ways better and brighter than the one we inhabit and has been sold as the model of what is forward and progressive in today's society the quote-unquote land of the free and I think subconsciously what this has done to the African hip-hop lover is it has made them a subservient consumer of the American dream via hip-hop and I think when we investigate whether or not that is something productive for the continent let alone for the spirit of the people we see that what it's really doing at its core is just expanding capitalism with a face that feels African in the modern context. But there have been Africans who've understood this dichotomy and who have stepped back and intentionally tried to decolonize hip-hop as they speak and fight for it in the continent. One of these practitioners is somebody who understands hip-hop from a level that can be termed Pan-African. Now for anything or anybody um, who doesn't know what Pan-Africanism is, it's the ideology that all black people all over the world are threaded together by the common struggle that has been subjected to us by the Western world and we are therefore comra comrades and allies in the struggle of unifying each other's cause for basic human rights and the ultimate freedom of being acknowledged and understood by the world at large and of course the repairing of the past as it's been designed by the West to try and present Africa as this backworld universe that was basically saved by Europe. The Pan-Africanist that I'm talking about is Leslie Lee Kasumba. That's Mr. Double HP in the back. The track is called Skills or Ski, depending on how it is that you want to say it. Produced by the one they call Don Juan. This is Jazz Works FM. My name is Lee, your hostess with the Moses. Talk Someone who came to, I should say, the ears of many a South African um, to one of the most important and prolific radio stations in South Africa, that uh, being YFM. Lee and her partner at the time in crime and hip-hop, Bad Boy T, created a concept and a show that became a mainstay for South Africans in its depth, breadth, and accessibility, but I think mainly through Lee's understanding that this was beyond South Africa as a country, but hip-hop was a powerful tool to unite the continent in some of the differing politics that we were beginning that, you know, not even beginning, but had constantly unraveled through the intersections of what the continent is. Lee became a volunteer for almost forging a kind of unified theory of what would count as African rap helping some of the most formidable MCs with messages that had a resounding echo for the hood whilst at the very same time being unapologetically superstar in their portrayal of their own self-confidence. It is through people like Lika Sumba that we have all of the names that we constantly list in our great grand canon of MCs, B-boys, B-girls, because without the medium 
that allows for all of these different elements to come together, we probably don't have hip hop at all. What do I mean? The DJ and the MC and the graph writer and the breaker are at this artistic helm of what hip hop incorporates but many have expounded another element the element of a knowledge of self the element that allows for us to say if we are going to empower ourselves with these skills it's going to be by understanding our own story and the parts in our story that have been reinventing the same kinds of oppression Lee Kasumba is somebody who's understood the subtleties of South African politics and has been able to speak not only of South Africa but of Africa at large in ways that show the evolution, the technological advancement, the far-reaching imagination and futuristic projection of Africa as it lives and breathes. No wonder she became a key voice, not only in the music, not only in the DJ, but in terms of being a spokesperson for rap in particular, but hip-hop in general in the continent. Ultimately being part of Channel O Africa, a formidable concept that through music and, it, and the videos thereof was able to give Africa a new developing aesthetic that allows the rest of the world to have a window into what's actually going on. It is people like Lee Kasumba who are at the helm of holding that creativity in their hands and help, helping young artists to curate and cultivate the kind of messages that will echo out two things. Africa is in a constant journey of realizing and knowing itself and this will not be a journey that subjects itself to the West. It will be a journey that holds on to the world in its own terms and conditions. It will be a journey which seeks to understand how to undo the wrongs and hopefully redo the things, the great things that have been done in the past and in the present as we move towards the possibility of what Africa could be. So, um, so Channel O was quite interesting when I initially, so initially with Channel O, um, it, working with Channel O was quite a privilege. Um, when I, growing up, I used to watch Channel O and it was like kind of the, obviously the first pan-African channel and you were seeing music from everywhere, so which was really great. Um, and then I, because I had a background in hip hop, um, I started, um, I was hosting a show on Channel O called um, MC Africa, where I traveled to different African countries, hang out with rappers. Okay. My poor dad, as a Ugandan person, I still love you. <laughs> um, so I hang out with rappers in different countries, literally in the middle of battles and ciphers, because I, that, was wh that was who I was. Um, and so I worked on that. And then, um, when after I'd, after I'd, and at the same time I was working at YFM, which, was a, it's, which is a big youth radio station in South Africa. And so mm -hmm. you, at YFM, a lot of the big names in South Africa come from there. So Black Coffee was part of YFM, Trevor Noah, everybody was literally like the hub of where entertainment came, blew up in South Africa. Yeah. Um, and then there was like a bit of a period in my life where there was a break um, and while I was doing a bit of work so when I was doing a little bit of like work here so emceeing events here and all of that and then one day I got a call um, from a Ugandan in South Africa called mm -hmm. Joby and he said to me oh the Mnet executives are, are, are talking about you and I'm like oh Joby that's cool thanks Bye. <laughs> that was a conversation. And then um, they asked me to join, basically they, I went for interviews and they asked me to join in as um, head of Channel O Africa. And what it was was that um, I had to look after East, West and Central Africa and then the, uh, the other person, the other head of Channel O, should I say, took care of Channel O in SADC, um, in Southern Africa, okay. basically. For me, it was really awesome being able to be at Channel O at that time. That was in 2011. Um, it was so I'm here to appreciate an icon somebody who is not so much quote-unquote behind the scenes but is pretty much part and parcel of the structure of what South African and African hip-hop in general has become. So when we talk GOATs, we often talk about the people who have helped a feature reach a level of accessibility, notoriety and most importantly a sense of being understood. So if there are people who have helped rap 
and hip hop in general come to a greater understanding of itself and be understood by those who are not particularly directly involved or interested in it. It's Ali Kasumba. And the fact that she's alive and well to still actively become somebody who engineers how media and the way that Africa communicates itself to the rest of the world becomes pivotal is an honor in and of itself. So this episode is dedicated to that Pan-African spirit. And it's a question that are there other people beyond Lee Kasumba who we can identify who don't represent a hip-hop for their own countries who don't represent a hip-hop that speaks to the growing capitalist need to reproduce trends and pop culture who don't want to use the standard of America as the standard of measuring how effective we are as rappers and b-boys and DJs and b-girls and what so have you. Because to be honest with you, I can't think of any. If Lee Kasumba's Pan-Africanism is not present, as it complements with a radical black nationalism that comes from an Emil, Are we at the place in South African hip-hop and African hip-hop in general where a conscious sense of black radical tradition is starting to wane off? Are people like Lee Kasumba the last of a dying breed? That's only a question that you can answer and I hope by looking at the kind of politics that they've helped expand whether be it the grassroots localized engineering of ciphers, projects, mentoring people in the game, making sure that the messaging always speaks to a place that doesn't just offer itself to brands and if it does, that the brand respects the identity of the artist and understands that ultimately if anybody's going to use you to sell anything, it's going to have to permeate through your conscience and consciousness as well. Because it's people like Lee who understand that we can navigate within capitalism to use these themes as a way to break us out of this eventual mold that it always seems to be recreating. So I want to say a very big ups and immense thanks to the icon as she lives and breathes and this has been an attempt to try and piece together the ultimate contributions and the growing evolution of Lika Sumba. And hopefully it will inspire anybody else watching to the fact that we have people who have laid the foundation for how to think African as a lover of hip-hop and practitioner of hip-hop and how to understand how that ties into global capitalism, imperialism, and all of these other forces which are still, till this day, actively trying to belittle the capacity of what Africa can become, particularly outside the context of a Western lens. My name is Vijay, the brother from the ancient mother. And if you like this kind of shit, then please subscribe, because this is what we talk about at the Headspace. We investigate, we analyze, we digest and we manifest where this beautiful culture of hip hop is going in the continent. Give thanks to Lee Kasumba. Life. Yeah, she said it, man. Hip hop is life. And we're bringing it to you every day on the mic. Signing out sincerely yours. It's a hostess with the Moses. You know what it is, man. It's a battle chronicles. I